Welcome to Zcast, everyone. I'm CS Caraval from ZK Research, and I'm here at Cisco Partner Summit in LA. I'm with old friend Joe Berger. It's uh, been a while since you've been on Zcast. It's always good to see you. Yeah, and Joe, yeah. you are with Worldwide Technology. Correct. Award-winning Worldwide Award -winning Technology. Award-winning Technology. You, you won a global we won the Global Collaboration Partner of the Year Award last night. Yeah, yeah. and then uh, uh, just uh, for those maybe who aren't familiar with Worldwide Technology, just a quick refresher on who you are and what you do. Yeah, Global Technology Solutions Integrator, been around for over 30 years, based in St. Louis, uh, focused on the large enterprises, the public sector, and service provider. Uh, and I run our digital experience practice, so that includes everything from employee and customer experience technologies. Okay, and uh, the big news at the show, I think uh, this is obviously a partner-focused event, and uh, I think one of the things that's been consistent about this event is every year, Cisco changes the partner program, sometimes it's little tweaks, sometimes it's big changes. I would think with, you would call the, the news this week a big change. With Rodney, it's a big one coming, yeah. With, with Rodney Clark, their new um, uh, head of partner. Uh, they, they roll out something called the Cisco 360 partner program. Not a lot of details around it yet, but the idea Right, is that it moves more to a value-based program, and what? Any immediate thoughts on that? Yeah, we've uh, yeah we've actually been having a lot of conversations about it this week, and it is you're right, it's a big change. Yeah, uh, I think the program was probably a little due for a refresh, but it's it's incenting partners to number one, you know, go across architecture, build out newer solutions, as well as it's going to more of a um, a performance-based approach where it's not just sell this piece of equipment, make this dollar on a rebate. It's more around kind of looking at the whole portfolio and how the partner performs and where they invest and what services and value they add. So it's definitely a monumental task for Cisco. Yeah. They got, they, they've they announced some long-term roadmaps <laughs> to get it out the door. Um, and they're, they've got a lot of work to do, but I do think it is sort of the partner of the future approach. So, you know, we're excited to see it. Yeah, I think we've, you know, obviously this industry has talked a lot about selling outcomes, selling outcomes, selling mm -hmm. outcomes, but for most vendors, their partner programs aren't really outcome yeah, focused. Yeah, it, well, it's not. It's not incenting you to become yeah, outcome. Yeah, focused, and so right. I think if it helps with that, then then that's certainly good. Right? Yeah, 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 for yeah, sure. Yeah. Now I think the other uh, news here, I guess they had a lot of product news. A lot of it revolving around AI. Uh, uh, every, I, every show is AI. Yeah, we got to that. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, it took a couple of minutes to say. Yeah. AI congrats. Here, so. Yeah, you made yeah, it. Two and minutes. Um, uh, I think one of the things that I've liked about. Uh, the WWT approach is, uh, as part of your advanced technology center, you built an AI proving ground, right, to help customers go in, IDA, co-create, um, and uh, so just any lessons learned there, what are customers using proving ground for, where are we with AI? Yeah, well, I, you know, I, I think, and this is a testament to our CEO, Jim Cavanaugh, he has been very AI heavy for the past couple of years, and it starts at the top, and I think it's kind of pushed our organization to become really, I'd say almost AI first, uh, part of our value is our advanced technology center, and within there we do have this what we call the AI proving ground, where our customers and even our employees can go test out what is this vendor versus that vendor? How do I go test out some use cases? It's funny, I mean, we're learning a lot our own. The power consumption, yeah. the, the, the cooling requirements of this thing, the cabling requirements. I think AI is such a new domain for a lot of organizations. They don't quite understand what it takes to really be in the AI game, and so the Proving Ground really is a chance to go do that. I mean, Jim's already announced, I think we're up to a half a billion dollar investment within the Proving Ground. So we're really doubling down on this sector right now. And I would guess that's just the starting point. That's just the starting point. Yeah. We're, we're adding more data center space. And in fact, my building's being, not, half it's being knocked yeah, down yeah, for yeah. power and cooling. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's, uh, it's a big task for us, but we're all in. And do you think we're going to hit a limit here with power cooling, or do you think that's something we figure well, out? Well, there's, or who knows, right? yeah, Microsoft's making some interesting moves on, yeah. the, on the power front right yeah. now, so. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of uh, activity happening now. From and uh, one of the interesting things that G2 said on stage, and I um, uh, I think he stole this from me to some extent, was the 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 question about ROI around AI is is kind of an interesting question because I started my career in the internet days, and people you say what's the ROI of the internet? Now, if I were to ask you what's the ROI of the internet, it's not really an answerable question because it's not an option. It's just there. It, yeah. Right. And so is AI the same thing? Like, is there, do we stop, should we stop asking that question and just start using it? Uh, I'd say the two things I hear a lot from customers is, my board says I need to be an AI somehow yeah. and give me an ROI. We're actually finding, especially if you look at contact center, we've actually proven out the ROI on a number of different use cases. I think that one's a little bit more measurable because I can actually show time savings, cost savings, agent, uh, productivity. Kind of, well, productivity is a whole other term yeah, okay. that I, we'll get into. 
Uh, but if I can say, hey, I can get your agent back on a call within two minutes down from four, that's an actual time saving. You could put a number behind that. And so I think that's why you're seeing things like contact centers have a lot more interest right now because AI is a proven entity within that space. Productivity enhancers, I, I, you know, we have this conversation all the time. If I save you 30 minutes in your job every week, are you being more productive with that 30 minutes or are you going surfing home. the web, yeah, going yeah, home? Yeah, yeah. yeah, so that one's a little bit trickier. Yeah, that's an interesting question. I was talking with uh, one of the uh, executives from Cisco who will won't say yet, um, and asked, uh, let's say you save them uh, you know, four hours a week. Do you give people four hours a week off? Or yeah. he goes, no, he's not a chance. We just raise their goals. You just right? make so, them do more stuff. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I think that's, but that's not unlike when you think about the early days of the internet, right? We have more automation now. Like, you know, back pre-Salesforce, we didn't have sales automation tools. And so we expect more out of employees because we gave them sales automation tools. So I, I don't think it's unreasonable to expect a step measure in productivity from AI. Yeah, it's just it's just how do you measure that and how do you equate that into real dollars? I yeah. think it's the tricky part. Yeah, I think it's coming. Now there was one slide that G2 uh, Patel put up in his keynote that I want to almost credit you for, Joe. Uh, I think it was two years ago, in fact, I asked you, what do you want to see from Cisco? And you said, more thousand eyes. They're and doing it. Yeah, and then he put up a slide that showed Indeed, more thousand eyes. In fact, not just more thousand eyes, but max thousand eyes. It's if you thousand will. eyes everywhere. Yeah, across yeah. the product. So, why is that product so important? Well, I just think it's everyone wants to know what's going on within their environment. It doesn't matter if it's the application, the network. Now with the cloud, you can actually find out what's going in your web scalers. And I think people want to know where is that? Do I have the visibility, and can I actually make an action? Because I know that's where the the issues taking place. And the only way to do that is having agents everywhere. And so I think that's why Thousand Eyes had to get you know all over the place. Yeah. We're seeing this big in the cloud front, right? Put a Thousand Eyes agent on your video endpoint, I can now track down to that level. I mean, it's a, it's a huge value add for Cisco. Yeah. So now that I have a, if I have a WebEx problem, a video problem, I can find out very quickly where it is. I can quickly know where it yeah. is and I can remediate it faster. Yeah. And then ultimately, I can give a better employee experience because I can either see where the issue is or in some instances, I can predict when the issue might happen. And I think that's the whole thing, right? It's, it's the outcome, we talk about outcomes, yeah. it's the employee experience or the customer experience. And that's really what Thousand Eyes at the end of the day is going to enable. It's how do I give this better experience knowing where all the pain points might come from. Yeah, now you brought up uh, the Thousand Eyes agents on the Cisco devices. Um, and I, I actually think that was a brilliant move to, to do that. Yeah. And uh, uh, last week you and I were both at the WebEx One event. Um, and uh, I want to, so I want to just rewind a little bit and go back to that too. Any initial thoughts from WebEx One? I thought it was a great event, a lot of great customer meetings. Uh, it was an intimate setting. It wasn't, you know, the big everything yeah. IT. I like that better, actually. I, I like yeah, it too. Yeah. Everyone's kind of talking about the same themes. Um, I thought it was a great show. A lot of big announcements, obviously around AI, contact center. I mean, yeah, Cisco's never it. talked about this much contact center at a show before. Yeah. It was it was kind of nice to see. And why do you think they've made that pivot? Because they were the leader in UC for a long time. Now it seems like they've almost flipped the script and they've gone very heavy contact center, right? Uh, well, it, it's a couple things. I think that market is ripe for disruption, you know, between the transition to the cloud, AI coming into the fold and having real ROI behind it. I don't think there's really that dominant of a leader in the contact center segment anymore. So no. I think it's kind of anyone's game still. Yeah. Um, and so I, you know, I think they realize like that's a big market for them to attack. And so they, they put a lot more emphasis on contact center. And I also think contact center wasn't probably up to par as it is now for the past few years. They've gotten to a good place. Yeah. Well, actually, and it's funny as an analyst too. I really only cover technologies that are, you know, emerging, right? And. I didn't cover Contact Center for a long time because frankly there wasn't a lot of interesting yeah, going on. It was the context. Yeah, and now yeah. with AI, it's it's interesting. In fact, the demo they showed of their virtual agent. Oh, it's great. I thought it was pretty fascinating it's great. because it allowed you to talk to a virtual agent that I in fact G2 said it was a eighty percent human, but I I don't know if you could if most people could tell. Most people can't tell. And then And, then, and you notice they interrupted the person yeah. and it actually stopped and kept going. So it was it was a good demo to yeah. kind of show more natural conversation versus sometimes you talk to a virtual agent, you can tell it's very scripted. This was pretty natural. Yeah, so if we tie the news from that show, the WebEx One to Partner Summit, the common theme of course is AI. Is contacts under the natural starting point for most companies with AI? We are getting a lot of requests as just, hey, to my point earlier, the board wants us to be an AI. Contact Center is an easy starting place. It's, it's a little bit simpler to turn on 
And like I said, you can actually get the ROI. We, in fact, we have, I think, seven or eight ROI calculators just for Context Center right now. So it's just an easy conversation to go have. All right, and then just last question then. Um, you know, for I guess companies looking to move forward with AI initiatives or any kind of um, you know advanced technology, everyone's thinking about modernization, modernizing everything. Oh yeah. Uh, how do you help Cisco customers do that given the size of partner you are? You know, one thing that we do really well is we can kind of connect, you know, the, the business outcomes and help create strategy all the way through the actual execution of it. By leveraging things like our advanced technology center, our AI proving grounds, we can really help them put the plan in place, but also execute it, help them adopt and actually see that ROI and that outcome at the end of the day. So Yeah, I actually, I've always thought too, when, uh, when there's a, uh, I'm going to choose the right word here, when the complexity goes up, and I'm not saying that Cisco's worked a lot on simplifying their products. Yes, they have. But just complexity from multi-vendor environments, do I put things in the cloud, do I bring it back on-prem, how do I secure it, right? Just the overall IT system, ecosystem got more complex. That's when partners like you really shine because it's not, you know, there's no best practices, yeah. there's no standard playbooks. Yeah, we, like do, we yeah. do a great job with kind of putting that whole story together yeah. and really focusing on the outcome of it, not just can I put it in, does it work, but also how do I get the end users to use the systems or how do I help you understand it and do what it says it's going to do? Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, uh, uh, on that note then, uh, anything else you want to add, Joe? No, it's been a great week. Yeah. A couple, great couple of weeks, to be honest. Yeah. 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 So, you know, it's, it's been a busy couple of weeks and yeah. it's, good, it's good to see Cisco moving forward with so many uh, announcements. In a lot fact, of excitement out of Cisco yeah. in the past in, couple of weeks. In fact, weeks. I do like the see. fact they rolled product up to one person and it's, I'm, I'm open to see more. We've been asking for for years, yeah. the <laughs> one Cisco story under G2, I think he's the right guy to lead it. We love the direction he's headed. All right. Well, one Cisco, one more thousand eyes. More thousand eyes. So all credit to Joe Berger. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right. So on behalf of Joe Berger from Worldwide Technology, I'm ZS Caraval from ZK Reaches. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. I'll see you next time on the next episode of ZCast. Thanks, Joe. Thank you.